encourage you to continue to read lots of various Proverbs and just lists of so much good wisdom. But the first nine chapters, we see these speeches as parents, the kids, as Lady Wisdom of all of these things, really uh, imploring us and pleading with us at times that we would listen and live to the wisdom that works. I don't know about you, but I have been struck time and time again in preparing for this series how often God calls to us and pleads to us to listen. And it is startling to me that if the creator of the universe gives us um, an invitation, that people would or we would turn him down on that. Now, why is it that God has to continually call to us to listen to him? And so that's something that hopefully you're wrestling with, and sometimes it's because we are foolish and we don't turn to God's wisdom because we think we can handle life on our own. Have you tried to handle life on your own before? I have, right? Didn't turn out real well, right? Very, very poorly. And we do have that option, and you can do that. However, God is our good Father, offers to us his guidance, his wisdom, his spirit. And so it is up to us to turn to him, to acknowledge him, and to embrace what he would have for us. So God gives us hope and encouragement to continue to persevere in our faith. The Word of God does that, offers us hope and encouragement so that we will have strength to persevere and follow Him. In doing so, God warns us of things that will harm us, traps, pitfalls, and sins, and also points us in the direction or directions we should go. He provides companionship with us and gives us, as you know, everything we need for both life and godliness. And not only does he give us what we need during our time on this earth, he also promises us an inheritance that will never fade or be stolen or rust upon and promises of new life forevermore. These things give us hope. These things provide strength. These things help us to persevere when at times things are difficult or fearful or we're facing um, options to go one way towards the things of God or another way in a different direction. Now, last week, as we saw, one of the trap he, traps he tells us to avoid is to avoid being intimately entangled with another person who is not our spouse. Again, God in his goodness says, watch out for that. And again, we went into depth of that last week. Now, this week, God provides for us a better way and a better relationship. So we'll see now Lady Wisdom, the beauty of God calling to us in contrast to what we saw in chapter 6, what we read in chapter 7, adulterous woman, excuse me. And it's a contrast now to Lady Wisdom. And so we are going to learn what God provides for us through his wisdom so that we would go the right way and have a glorious life in relationship to God and his word. So in chapter 8, we'll read about the worth of Wisdom, and that is the title of today's message. By the way, if you're looking for notes, you can find them uh, on the web, and you can find them in the back as well, because there's lots of information that we do look at when we are together. So in chapter 8, we'll read about the word of wisdom, where God himself describes wisdom, describes her and her glories, and encourages us to shun the adulterous relationship, but to engage with this person. And so again, my prayer is that we would have ears to hear and hearts 
that will turn in God's direction and embrace his good gift for us. So this is the first point, which is on the screen. And if you're underlying, lining, it's be guided with wisdom. Aren't you glad that God offers guidance to you, right? In all of our decisions, he asks us to seek him. And so we'll see now Lady Wisdom calling out to us in very public places. Again, in contrast to the adulterous person, the wisdom of this world that kind of sneaks in at the cover of night. So let's read together Proverbs chapter 8, starting with verse 1. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice at the highest point along the way where the paths meet. She takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city. At the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain guidance. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. So you see now wisdom personified as a lovely lady, in places in which we are most looking for guidance. You'll see this in this passage. At a place where pathways meet, in a place in which we have to make a decision. We can either take this choice heading that way, or we can make that choice going that way. That is where wisdom goes to the highest place and calls to us, look to me. Listen for me. We also see wisdom placing herself at the gate of this city. Going from something simple, as in the country where there's not a whole lot of doors or turns or calls to us. From a place of more simplicity to a place of more complexity. Wisdom is there at that transition point saying, Listen to me. I will guide you through the maze of choices. I will help you discern the voices that are calling to you and which ones you are to listen to, which opportunities you are to advance towards, which things you are to avoid. This is how God sets up his wisdom at the times in which we need her the most. Each person in this room, each person who is listening online, you are facing some sort of decision. Now, some of your decisions are mundane as to what you're going to eat this afternoon, okay? But some of them are much, much, much bigger as to will you even follow God as to what is going on perhaps in your marriage or things with your work or perhaps with your children or your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. Every single day we have choices. And some of those choices seem easy, but often there are times in which we need good guidance and friendship like a good spouse to help us to see things we cannot. God offers you this. And it's not just available to a select few in a little room with direct access to the Father. God has given you access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Thank you for that amen. Right. Amen. You don't have to come talk to a priest or a pastor to get access to God. Jesus Christ gave you access to God. Through the grace of God, through his goodness. 
and he makes his wisdom available to us. Why would we spurn God's invitation? You need God's wisdom. You're smart, but you're not God smart. Okay? You have some information, but according to in comparison to God, it is minute. It's a drop in the ocean of the goodness and wisdom of God. And so this invitation cries out to us, and for me going through this, and hopefully you going through this as well, that you are thinking and hopefully turning towards God more often. And I've heard people say, well, I don't want to bother God with my request. What? Oh, God's busy. God's omniscient, right? God's all-powerful. God invites us to interact with him. It's called prayer. Have you heard about it? Powerful. An invitation to the greatest king of all invites you? What an honor. It's me. What a scandal. He invites us. Will you gain guidance because of God's grace and goodness calling to us? Listen. Listen. Live. Don't be foolish. Set your hearts on me. He continues on. Lady Wisdom calling to us in verse 6. Again, here it is. Listen. For I... Have trustworthy things to say. When I talk, you can trust what I'm saying is right and good and true. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips, they test wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked. None of them are perverse to the discerning. All of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. So choose my instruction instead of silver, a fat paycheck. Choose knowledge rather than gold bars. For wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing that you desire, I desire, compares with her. If you want a true and good guide, a faithful and honest companion, a person in which is right and true and for you all the time. That is God and his wisdom. Always. Aren't you fascinated how sometimes you and I question God? Have you ever questioned God before? I have. God, why did that happen? God, why am I at this place? Why did my spouse get cancer? Why did my water heater break in the middle of the night? That did happen, by the way. At those times, we have to look at God's big picture. God's goal for you is to conform you into the image of his son. Romans chapter 8, verse 27, 28, and 29. This is God's goal, that we would look like Jesus. So God in his wisdom points us and moves us in Jesus' direction. 
So every time, be it a glorious height or a difficult situation, he uses all things together for the good of those who love him and walk according to his way. So you and I and we can trust God and his wisdom. So in times in which we are confused, the prayer is, God, show me what you're doing here. God, show me where your glory is. God, show me where the grace is. God, show me where the redemption is. Help me to continue to be like your son and persevere. Amen. This is what I want you to do. God is not absent. God is not preoccupied with things in other places in the world. God is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is all-powerful. He is everywhere, and he is involved. He's not a God that the deists say that put everything into motion and took a vacation. He is sovereign. He is powerful. He is intimate. And he is Lord. He will speak to you what is right. He will guide you with what is good. Choose the wisdom of God over anything this earth can offer. Because you're not taking it with you. Right? All the gold and all the vaults of the world are going to remain. All the nice houses and boats and lands and planes and all this stuff. You're not taking it with you. All of this pales in comparison the glories of what is yet to come. So choose him. Choose to listen to his word. Choose wisdom from God over all of the stuff that shines and tinkles and looks so good it is nothing Compared to him. Wisdom, God's word, God's spirit, more precious than anything. And nothing that you can desire compares with her. So the prayer is, God, have my desire be greater for you and your wisdom than anything else. And some of us have some pretty strong desires. So we ask for God in his grace to change our hearts, to desire what he desires for us. Wouldn't that be great? God, work in my heart. God, give me your wisdom. God, help me to see what is most of value. God, help to guide me. So first, be guided with wisdom. Listen and live at all of the crossroads at life, at all of the places from simplicity to complexity, and all of the times in which we wonder what to do, ask, seek, listen, he will help. And there are testimonies and testimonies in this room of that very thing. Secondarily, we see from the Word that we are to be and love with wisdom. Be guided with wisdom for sure, but go beyond that. Be in love with this wisdom. Verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion to fear the Lord. This is the wisdom, is to hate evil. That's a good thing to underline. I like. I, this can't be stronger than this. Hate pride. I hate arrogance. This is the wisdom of God talking. I hate evil behavior. I hate perverse speech. If you want to know what God hates, he hates these 
things because they corrupt and they resist God himself. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. Wisdom says, I have the insight you need. I have power for this day and every day. By me, kings and presidents reign and rulers and judges and lawmakers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern and nobles all who rule the earth. Do you, do you see the benefits of wisdom? Though so again, this is wisdom personified as this lady saying, hey, I want you to know my best friend. Her name is Prudence. We are together. We share everything. We will help you. And wisdom says, will you have a relationship with me? God says, will you have a relationship with me? Because if you get me, guess also what you get? Knowledge. You get discretion, knowing what to choose. And here is this wisdom. Right? The fear, the awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, yes, but all those who hate, excuse me, fear the Lord, hate evil. Sometimes I think I don't hate evil enough. I don't like it. I especially don't like it when it happens to me. <laughs> hate evil? That's a strong word. Right? We have to ask ourselves, and I alluded to it, why does God hate evil? And then he starts to list the top things. I hate pride and arrogance. Why? Because what pride says is, I got it together. I got it, God. And I am the source of wisdom. I know what to do. I know you're God and all that, but I'm pretty darn special myself, right? Aren't we prone to this? Don't you get in trouble when you think you know better than God? Right? I got trophies of this. That are yet scars. Why does he hate it? Because it keeps us away what is the best for us, which is namely him. And he goes on and talks about, hey, sound judgment is mine. You need some sound judgment? Go fall in love with wisdom. You need some insight? God has it. You need power? He possesses it. And goes on that all the kings and rulers and presidents and leaders of the earth that do things that are just, that govern rightly, who rule on the earth, they get that wisdom from God, even if they do not acknowledge it. If you want to pray, no, 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 no. I'm going to refrain from that. <laughs> when you pray for our leaders. And I'm not saying praying curses. Come on, stop it. I don't care who you voted for. Maybe I care a little bit. <laughs> but I do care who you pray for. I do pray what you pray. You want to pray a good prayer for all of those in authority, authority pray that they have ears to listen to the wisdom of God. Thank you for that. That they would have wisdom. That God would grant them wisdom. Help them to be humble so they would look to God and recognize that he is the source 
of wisdom because by him kings reign. Pray this way. Be in love with wisdom for yourself, for those who govern. Verse 17, and I love this. I love those who love me. (laughs) And those who seek me, find me. Have you ever been in a one-way relationship? I remember this. there was a girl in fourth grade I was in love with. Her name was Missy. Missy knew, didn't know that I existed. Have you ever been spor- spurned, spurned, not a word, spurned by someone you love? It happens. Here's the good news about God and his wisdom. If you love him, if you love her, she'll love you back. Right? I love those who love me. Don't you like that? This is a date that will last forever. (laughs) And those who seek me, pursue me, come after me, they'll find me. This is not a hard to get God. This is a God who is available. Now, God has standards, right? But if you love him, he will love you. If you love his wisdom, he will love you back. If you pursue him, he'll be found by you. And with God, with his wisdom, with his goodness, with him, our riches, with her, our riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity, the dividends that the wisdom of God yields are far greater than any human money manager. Wisdom, wealth that will last. You see this? Enduring wealth. Not just the trinkets of this planet, which are okay, they're nice, they're helpful, but wealth that is real wealth, that endures forever. This is what God provides for us in his wisdom. Verse 19, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. With God, you have a rich inheritance. My parents are not wealthy. I am wearing the inheritance I got from my dad. His watch. And sometimes I wonder, man, wouldn't it have been great if, you ever think about this? Didn't hear everyone wants an uncle, a really rich uncle that leaves you his fortune? Or aunt? Of course, I want that. Right? I wonder, well, what if my parents were wealthy? Right? I didn't grow up in wealth at all. What it had been like. And then I think about what God offers, right? God offers you a rich inheritance. That's good news. If you say, well, I was um, abandoned by my parents, and some of you were. You say, if I were forgotten by my family, and they were foolish, and some of your families are that way, but God is not foolish, and you have not been forgotten by him. When you say yes to him in his spirit, he writes you not just in the palm of his hand, <laughs> you're close to him, but he writes you into the will. Okay? You have an inheritance. And those who love me, those who follow in my way of righteousness along paths of justice, which isn't always easy, There is reward for those things. And this reward is received through obedience of faith. This is the offer. 
This is the revelation of God. Be in love with wisdom. Another prayer of mine that we would love the wisdom of God. Ask yourself the question, what are you most in love with? Now, there are things in this world that are healthy and good for us to be in love with, but if we love those things more than Christ himself, you know what Christ said? You are not worthy of me. Do you remember that? Have good loves, and God gives us beautiful gifts, and love them and enjoy them. But if they now have become greater than your love for God the Father and salvation to his son, they have now become an idol to you. So God, help us to love him more. And we have to ask ourselves in the gauge of our, of our, um, our heart, what revs the engine? Where is the greatest commitment and love? I love those who love me. God, help us to be in love with wisdom. Next point. We can be guided by wisdom if we listen. Be rewarded by wisdom if we are in love. And also rejoice with wisdom. And this is fun. Verse 22. Now the Lord brought me forth, that is Lady Wisdom, as the first of his works. Before his deeds of old, I was formed long ages ago. At the very beginning when the world came to be. She is an ageless beauty that gets more marvelous in the passing of time. Verse 24, when there was no watery depths, I love technology, this went blank. Okay, I'll keep going. When there was no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was there. I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or the dust of the earth. The wisest people have the longest perspective. And all the older people say, well, amen to that, right? They have seen it, been there, know what to do. They react to appropriately based upon their history and their knowledge and their experience. You know why you can trust wisdom of God? He's been there forever. God never overreacts to anything. He doesn't underreact. He knows exactly how to respond. Bonds. I don't know about you, but my emotional chart someday goes like this. God's doesn't. God never faces a situation where he's like, hmm, I don't know what to do here. God doesn't look at your circumstance and wonder, well, I'm sorry. That's just a little bit over my head. This is not God. What God says is, I've been here forever. I've seen everything. I know all things. Therefore, you can trust in me. I will be your constant companion. I will be with you. Talking like a precious and delightful offspring or a daughter of God. Now, continue as look, looking in verse 27. He continues on. Wisdom continues to say, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizons on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the foundations of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command. 
And when he marked out the foundations of the earth, I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Have you lost your joy? Have you lost your ability to see the goodness and the grandeur of God? This happens because of the dankness and the darkness and the disillusionment that the the, the prince of this world, world wants to bring above our eyes. And wisdom says, with me, I've rejoiced because I've seen the glories of what God has done, what he's doing, and what he will do. Will you rejoice with me? Wisdom will help you to rejoice. Rejoice in God's goodness, even seen in this veiled world. Even seen in his fallen creature. So here's a prayer for you today. God, give me your wisdom to see your glory and your goodness marked by your creation. That's a good prayer. I will pray that for you. I have prayed that for you. Especially if you're down, if you're depressed, if you're worried, if you're heavy laden. God, will you open my eyes and will you give me your spirit of wisdom so I can see your goodness today. Even in something as mundane as a piece of pepperoni pizza. To the rising of the sun. To the setting of the same. Wisdom rejoices in the goodness of God. So if you want to rejoice, ask for wisdom to see what God Cease. Mark that down. Someone needs to hear that. God, show me what you see today. It's a powerful and profound prayer. Please pray. Lastly, and this is my last point. Be blessed with wisdom. So you see now, in starting with verse 32, that the voice changes from wisdom herself talking now to the Father bringing some conclusion to this whole um, chapter and connecting it to, in contrast, to the adulterous choice, the adulterous relationship, and saying, now, now then, Verse 32, now then, my children, as a good father, grandfather, wise person, now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. This is more than just knowing his ways, but keeping them. If you want to be blessed, walk in God's wisdom. It's an automatic. Listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. God, help me to walk in your blessing by keeping your ways. My children, listen to my instructions and be wise. Don't disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me. You hear that? 
I want you to be blessed. It's not listening to me, it's listening to the word, right? Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway, like a young child waiting for their parent to come home, or a really good dog, right? The cat is somewhere else, right? We've talked about cats. But the dog. Waiting. You get that image? That excitement? Oh, they're coming home. Waiting, watching, and anticipation. That's the image. Blessed are those who listen to me watching daily at my door. God gives you an invitation to meet with him every day. Are we listening? Are we waiting? Are we watching for him? God, I get to connect with you today. God, I hear you in your word. This is why I tell us time and time and time and time again to read the word. A regular, daily basis. Why? Because you are blessed. <laughs> For those who find me, verse 35, find life and receive favor from the Lord. Do you want to have God's favor? Your answer should be yes, right? Then listen, watch, wait for him. Like a small child, some of my favorite memories when I come home and my kids are, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. What a blessing, what a beautiful thing. Those who find me find life. Receive favor. But those who fail to find me, you're just harming yourself. All who hate God love death. And that seems like an overstatement. You would say, well, agnostics or atheists or those who oppose God's word, and sometimes I oppose God's word by my willful sinning. Those who oppose God love death? How does that work? Because if you are opposing God, you're opposing life itself. Meaning that you would rather embrace darkness that's disguised as life. Right? This is what this means. If we oppose the life that God has, we only harm ourselves. And instead of choosing to love him, we are loving death. May that not be true of us. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. So this is how we're going to conclude. We're going to conclude in two ways. The musicians would come up, that'd be awesome. <clears throat> so one, hopefully you've heard something from the Lord today. Remember it. Write it down. Meditate on it. Think about it. Okay? This is, just, this is not a spiritual performance that happens up here. Are you hearing? Highlight, remember, think. My prayer is, perhaps you'll fall more in love today. My prayer is that you've gotten guidance today of something that you're thinking about. My, my prayer is that we would pray for our leaders. The applications are tenfold. And for those of you who are believers, embrace God's word and his wisdom and his way and his goodness and his life. God, show me more of your beauty. And that's your prayer. Those of you, perhaps, 
who are here this morning or with us online, that you have been in the edge of Christianity for a long time. You haven't crossed the line. You think that your way and your wisdom is better. (laughs) You just want to sprinkle a little Jesus on your life versus making Jesus the center of your life. Today's the day to step over, to embrace the Son of God, seen in his wisdom, seen in his goodness, seen in his sacrifice, seen in the eyes of his Son. That could be your prayer today, and I encourage you to pray that. Understand that embracing God is embracing life itself, and Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Life not just to enhance your life now. No, it's greater than that. To renew you, to free us from the power and the penalty of sin, to give us a new life, a new desire, because you can't follow wisdom on your own. You need God's heart. And he'll give you that heart today. So I'm going to pray for us and we will conclude in song. Please make this a holy moment. Quiet your heart, focus your mind. God, I am so grateful for my friends in this room. God, we are so grateful for your presence in this place. What an honor to have your word in a language we understand. What an honor it is to have time in our life to listen to you. God, I pray for my friends, your children. That we would choose to listen and live. We embrace the wisdom that works. That we would fall in love with you. And God, we need you. We need you. And so God, I ask that you would have your way in each one of us today. God, I ask that we would fall deeper in love with you today. And God, I ask for those in particular who are just trying to live life and don't know, God, but they would see you, Jesus, the bright and morning star, more precious than silver. And today, out of humility, say, here I am. Give me, renew me. I recognize that you are God. Help our hearts to continue to be more warm towards you. God, help us to embrace the Son. Father, we give you praise today. Thank you for going with us. Thank you for meeting us. 